omnibus. Produced by the TV radio workshop of the Ford Foundation. Our subscribers are the Scott Paper Company, makers of famous paper products. Aluminium Limited. Supplying American industries with aluminum from Canada. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and may we wish you an early recovery from a Merry Christmas. Now, this afternoon, Omnibus is trying a novelty. The whole show is turned over to a session of singing to some carols and chorales about Christmas. And in the first part of the program, a performance of the Christmas section of Handel's Messiah. Now, a lot of people I told about this were very excited to hear it, but said, how do you do Handel's Messiah on television? Because it's usually performed in the church under very undramatic circumstances. And the chorus is dressed in white. And as far as you're concerned, they're just a chorus of male and female. Well, without being too ambitious, we should say that this is a, essentially, an oratorio is a dramatic piece of music. It has a plot. It has a story, the oldest story in the Christian world. And there is the beginning, and there is the birth, and there is the announcement, and there is the celebration by the angels. First come the prophets. And we've simply made the principles into the characters they would be, and made the chorus, divided the chorus into angels and prophets. And the rule would seem to be to follow simply the dramatic line, and it is tremendously dramatic, of the music. Now we hear from our first subscriber. And meanwhile, Leonard Bernstein will assemble the Symphony of the Air and Hugh Ross, the chorus of the Schola Cantorum and the principals, for the Christmas section of The Messiah of George Frederick Handel. Here in the mountains of Western Canada, the biggest construction job ever done by private industry is being undertaken. Kitimat, a city of 6,000, has sprung up almost overnight. A giant aluminum smelter, already in operation, will eventually be able to produce one quarter of all the aluminum the U.S. uses today. A wilderness river has been turned around, its flow reversed. A mountain torn down, moved, then built up again to form a lake over 100 miles long. All this to provide power for aluminum. One of Canada's great natural resources, its abundant low-cost water power, has been harnessed by man to benefit the entire continent. For the aluminum ingot produced in Canada helps provide U.S. manufacturers with a vital raw material, U.S. workers with millions of jobs, and all North Americans with greater security and prosperity. Messiah, an oratorio in score, as it was originally performed, composed by Mr. Handel. This is the great work by which most of us know Handel, the German opera composer who went to London at the age of 27 and he liked it so much that he stayed the rest of his life. Now, if this was simply the crowning work of a great composer, there would be nothing for me, certainly, to say about it. I should leave that to the musicologists. But I guess that you could buy this first edition of Handel's Messiah for about 30 times the money that Handel got for writing it. That's because there is a rather poignant story attached to how it came to be written. And it has the merit over other musical stories of being true. I'd like to tell it to you. When Handel sat down in a little house in Brook Street in London in the summer of 1741 and began to write the first few bars. He was sick, he'd been paralyzed, he was utterly neglected, and he was musically a dead fashion. Only three years before, he'd been called by Alexander Pope the music master of the world. But now he had nowhere to go for a patron and very often for a meal. So he sat down in this house in Brook Street, and he stayed there and never went out for three weeks, sleeping little and eating very little. And in that time, he started 
and finished the Messiah in 24 days, one of the greatest feats of, perhaps the greatest feat of musical composition that we know, the whole three parts. Now today you will hear the first two parts, the Christmas section. That was finished in 16 days, and the orchestration was done in one. Now it wasn't a matter of a man who was down on his luck making a sustained effort of concentration. He himself told later that it was, he said, as if I passed through a prolonged dream, it was something very close to a vision. And on the 15th night, when his servant came in to see him and saw plates of food untouched, he found Handel with the hallelujah chorus still not dry on the page, bent over and tears streaming down his face. And Handel said, I did think that I did see all heaven before me and the great God himself. Well, when he finished it, he simply put it in a drawer because at that time nobody would play or sing his music. And then about three months later, he got an invitation from the uh, Lord Lieutenant of Ireland. The Irish had not heard of his, they'd heard of his fame, but not of his late ill fame. And so he went over to Ireland, recruiting a company and rehearsing it at, at inns in stagecoaches on the way. And in the following spring, he was asked to write something for charity. And he pulled out the Messiah, which was put on for the, the program said, for the relief of prisoners in small jails and for St. Stephen's Hospital on Mercer Street. It played before 700 Irishmen packed into a tiny theater. And when he went back to England, London had heard about it and they could forget his bad days, but they could not forgive him as it turned out, putting on an oratorio in a playhouse. So in London, it was a flop, it ran three days. However, the king condescended to patronize his old favorite, and he came to the second performance. And when the Hallelujah Chorus started, the king was so moved that he stood. Now, in England, it is, was always so, and it's still so, that you cannot sit when the king is standing, so everybody else stood. And from that day to this, the custom has remained that the whole audience rises at the opening bars of the Hallelujah Chorus. So you see, George II, was the last English king that Americans took an order from. Now, Leonard Bernstein and the Symphony of the Air, Hugh Ross, the Schola Cantorum, and the principals, in the order they appear, tenor, David Lloyd, bass, William Warfield, mezzo-soprano, Gloria Lane, and soprano, Adele Addison. Messiah, an oratorio in score.
the Lord of hosts. Yet once a little while, and I will say. I'll shake the hand, the earth, the sea, the dry land, all nations. I'll shake and I'll be wrong. The whole nation shall come. The Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of For he is my 
like a refiner's fire, like a refiner's fire. And who shall stand when he, when he appeareth? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire. And who shall stand when he appeareth? When he appeareth? Like a refine.